Sierra, ready to copy IFR clearance to New Hanover. Diamond Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra is cleared to New Hanover Airport as filed. Take off runway tree one left climb and maintain 8,000 feet. Departure frequency is 134 decimal 35 squawk 7055. Kennedy ground Lufthansa cargo 8161 with Sierra ready to taxi IFR. Lufthansa Cargo 8161 Taxi 2 and hold short of runway tree 1 right via taxiway Tango Alpha Alpha Delta Bravo Yankee Alpha cross runway 22 right Yankee Alpha. Contact tower on 123 decimal niner when ready. Kennedy Ground Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra with Sierra ready to taxi IFR. Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra Taxi 2 and hold short of runway tree 1 left via taxiway Golf cross runway 22 right Golf Zulu. Contact tower on 119er decimal one when ready. So that might seem kind of odd and like Greek to most people, you know, the same. But uh, as far as things goes, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And this tutorial is going to get into taxiing and it's going to explain a lot of that. Plus a lot of other things like the marks on the grounds. Now, with that one in mind, I'm going to mention that what I'm going to be talking about within here, it's just going to be applying to the simulator. It's not going to be applying to much in the real world. There's going to be some things I'll be talking about how it's done in the real world. But uh, whatever your CFI says, go with that. I'm not here to replace your CFI. I'm not even here to be in addition to your CFI. I'm just here to help you out with uh, the simulation. So just note that I'm also going to give you some tips if uh, if you want to become a pilot, you know, get your private spot license. Uh, then I'm going to give you some tips on how to better deal with things and how to use this to your advantage too. So with that one in mind, the uh, big thing to note is um, you need to know what airport you currently are at. In this case, we are at um, JFK. So if you don't know, you can go to your GPS, NRST, click that, and the first one is that. Or look at the flight plan, and the first thing should tell you what airport you're at. From that, I want you to go to the following site. And if you put in the search, then you will get the actual airport and this includes diagrams hours cost of fuel um you know concierge services and so on we just need a diagram that's all that really matters at this sake now this might seem very confusing and, and whatnot and kind of is but i'm going to try to break it down as much as possible so note that i'm going to to um you know avoid talking about certain things that really doesn't apply here so there's going to be a lot here that I'm just simply not going to talk about. But we're just going to be focusing purely on taxiing. So anyways, uh, with all that being said, if we uh, take a look at where we're at on here, we can see more of, of where we w should be on the diagram. Uh, note that there is no markings at this time uh, for uh, the, the taxiways and all the other stuff. And this is something I personally don't like because this um, is not realistic in some GPS's, other GPS can be. But I don't like how you have to use third-party services to get the diagrams, but it is kind of necessary. And it's so much necessary to the point that if you're planning on taking off of a given airport and a game and landing at a different one, it, then I highly recommend pulling up the diagrams for both of them and just get them ready whenever you're going to take off or land and that way you can easily pull up and reference it. In the real world what they do, what, what many pilots do, is because you know what airport you're taking off from, you know what airport you're going to be landing at, they print the actual things and that way they can quickly reference it and go from there. Now this again it might seem like Greek 
but I'm going to try to help you out as much as possible. I took a screenshot of the important bits. And basically what we have here is with theirs, it starts at TA. TA. So what is TA? And basically if we take a look and try to find A or T, in this case we found A pretty easily because it's near us, and uh, basically we just follow it the road down and eventually we'll find T and uh, where TA meets that's uh, TA and then from there it's asking for DB so let's actually go ahead and uh, scroll up a bit so we can actually see what it wants, it wants the person to do so they start at TA right here so let's just say right here go to TA turn on A which is you know that that road right there so it wants it to turn on that road and go to DB if you take a look DB is right there keep going and keep in mind I never flown in and out of this airport never been in New York uh, real life or whatnot and um, you know just just quick references you can pick up on these things quite easily so anyways um, we go to DB then you got YA so right here so once a person go around go up to YA and it says cross one way 22R 22R so that's runway uh, 22R so cross runway 22R YA right there and it's about right about here which is 31 R and uh, what's going to happen is it wants the person to stop right there before he hits the runway so it says hold short Ta taxi to which is all that then hold short and then contact tower when you when you do that so why contact tower why not just say go ahead and take off or whatever it may be or uh, contact me again when you get there reason why is ground control is its own domain and the runways are its own domain runways are through the tower service um, the ground control is is basically everything else and that's fairly important notes now it's also very important notes that the uh, Runways has a domain of it's. I think I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's like 200 uh, feet or something like that from the sides of a runway, um, and including the runway itself. Whereas everything else is domain of the ground control. If, for example, the person didn't have permission to go on the runway, they didn't have the cross runway, then what could have happened is. They would actually need to have, um, they would actually have to go ahead and see if they can get in hold of the ATC, get permission to cross the runway. And if ATC didn't give permission to continue on and, and give them direction, in this case it, it definitely would because it's so close, but um, what would end up happening is you would have to get permission from ground control to go the rest of the way and go from there. It's better to get permission than not at all because you don't want to be the fault of some people getting messed up. And one thing I'll tell you right now, like it or not, as a pilot in, in the real world, you, the blame will be pushed on you more so than anyone else, even if it's ATC's fault. I've seen it time and time again in incident reports in other places where it's clearly the ATC's fault because, you know, they're human and whatnot, but they'll blame the actual the pilot and, and error, um, even though it's clearly not their fault. So you want to make it as little chance of being your fault as possible to the insurance and whatnot. So it's pretty important to note that. Now, let's talk about the uh, my go about. So with that, let's uh, go a little bit over there and um, try to move this around. So we are starting at a different location. We are starting around here, somewhere around there. 
So it wants us to go to taxiway G, which is right there, then go across, and then go to G, and then go to Z. So how this will look is basically you go across, and because it says G, we go across G, and because it says cross the runway, 22 bar, we go across the runway. And it says G, we go across G. And it says Z, so we go across until we hit this point. Because it says taxi two, which is we taxi it to it. And then we hold short of runway 31R or 31L. And um, when we hold short, it says contact tower at that frequency and then basically we contact tower get permission if they agree to it we take off and fly away if not then we uh kind of you know do whatever so that's important to note is it's a very simple thing it seems a lot complicated than it really needs to be but that's it's a very very simple thing um it's, it's much more easier even on here um if, if you want to play around with the systems because you can simply read it instead of playing the guessing games. Uh, it's very hard to miss your things when um, everything's written out for you. So with that one in mind, let's go ahead and look at a few things. So I'm going to go ahead and let's change the weather real quick for us. So it's a different time of day. And you may notice this thing right here. And why is that important to note? Well, the thing is, is if we take a look at thing, we can actually see what looks like to be dotted lines and solid lines. Basically, all that means is outside of, um, you know, this area where we're parked at, you know, we're parked, we can go up to it and whatnot, but we need to have permission to go on the taxiways so we must be stopped unless we get permission in this case we got permission you can get permission from where you're uh, parked so just note that and most people do that way you're not blocking traffic and whatnot but it, it also means and this is the big one is planes coming into here have a right of way versus planes going out this is very very important notes because note the dot lines versus solid lines it's the same thing like in highway where you have a solid line let's just say that there's dotted lines well if you're a car and want to get around like some other car up here you can have the ability to go around whereas if it's a um, solid line you got a car you got an air and you got a car in front of you um, then it's actually illegal for you to do that so it's very important to note that it's same type of principle that because this is dotted lines that could come in and that's really more or less what this one is but it is also important to note that there's no reason to be on the taxiway unless if you have permission to be on the taxiway because again that's its own domain into itself now let's go ahead and um, also note a, another thing that uh, that we have over here and this is these little signs so as far as that goes if we take a look at this black means where you currently are so if we take a look at the diagram real quick um, we can see that a is going left or right and G is obviously where we're at so if we take a look at here it even tells us where a is and I'll get a little bit more into this in a second but um, let's go ahead and go and push forward for a little bit. So as we push forward, I want to mention that the big things you want to keep in mind is those signs like that. Don't go too, too fast. Obviously, use situational awareness to figure out where things are. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing it from this point of view versus the other is if you are going for realism of things then you need to know what it's going to look like and it can be quite difficult 
and to seeing things. So we're coming up to our first thing. So we're on G right now, and we're coming up to the runway itself. Now I'm going to be using this as a point. I'm gonna think I yep stop right in time. So I'm going to be using this as a point to take a look at things. So if we take a look and this thing right here, you might have noticed it. This that's about a hundred and fifty, a hundred feet, and this is something very new in um, aviation. Basically, it is a hundred to one hundred and fifty feet from the actual runway. It uh, it actually uh, will show you that, and that way you know that there is a stop right there. So that's something to note into itself. Now, as far as something else to take a look at, is if we take a look at these things right here. What this means is this is runway 22R and 4L. So if we take a look at the diagram, as we see here, 22R and 4L. That's all that means. So from there, um, you know, it means for simple so let's continue on and uh, notes that even says right over there 22R 4L we're on G so let's uh, continue on and note that if we didn't have clearance to go across the runway we would have to get it um, even if you have clearance you know be slow look left right simple stuff Oh, and by the way, before I forget a uh, few things, use your pedals when you're turning on taxi and on, uh, when you turn on the ground. Yokes is not really used on the ground, so just note that unless you're pulling back. So here's the next thing I want to take a look at. It's the signs over there. So one big thing I want to point out, and by the way, the yellow note that I'm staying on the yellow, that that just tells me um, where where I'm going. If it's white, that means that you're on a runway. So let's actually go back and take a quick look. You note that the lines there are white, whereas the lines here are yellow. Yellow is taxiway, white is runway. So that's also very important to note to, to itself because that can lead into some major problems if you don't realize that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the signs here, because this is very complicated into itself. And um, you'll see that all these symbols. So what this basically means is we currently are on G, and if we take a look at the thing, we're on G, we got Y going across, and Z diagonal. And as you see here, we're on G, we got Y going across, and we can even see it over here, Y, and over there is Y, and then we got Z diagonal, which we're going on. Pretty simple stuff. And by the way, uh, I'm going to switch the thing to nighttime so you can actually get a good look at it. And as you see here, it's a little bit more easier. I, I decreased the volume there. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, if, if it's too much at any point and you just want to, you know, have all the other sounds, you can actually decrease the volume within the cabin. So as far as things goes. Um, let's take a look at the lights before we move on. Um, in case you're flying at nighttime, note the green lights. Green lights are taxi, so it allows you to see where the uh, yellow should be. The blue lights are barriers. That's very important so you don't go into grass and get stuck. The white lights is the landing. Uh, that helps out quite a bit there. But anyways, just notice that the green is taxiway, blue is barrier, white is runway. That's 
the biggest things that you gotta note. But also note that when you're landing, the yellow and red is going to be a big thing that you want to pay attention to. Really quick, if you miss a runway or taxiway and mess up, in the real world you would announce it to ATC or ground services, depending on which one, and they'll try to fix something that's their job. You know, mistakes happen and we're all human. But if um, you do that in game, just roll off it because at this time there is no way to simulate that portion of it. Maybe that'll happen in the future, but right now you just kind of have to roll with it. Alright, this is quite interesting. So we got a plane here. On taxiway. Here. And note that we have to stop preferably before. So let's go and uh, turn up the volume. And let's just contact tower and request clearance to take off. Kennedy Tower Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra at runway tree one left ready for takeoff IFR to new Hanover. Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra cleared for takeoff runway tree one left. Huh. Cleared for takeoff runway tree one left Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra. That's, uh, <laughs> so in the real world, what would happen, <laughs> let's just say I ATC messed up. That, that, that shouldn't happen. Let's just say ATC messed up. What would, would end up happening in the real world is you would mention something about runway is not clear. And they would take a look at it and try to fix the situation as quickly as possible. I just want to add something real quick. In the real world, I don't know if it's in the game, but in the real world, the ATC might tell you to go on the runway and wait. If it's obvious, then, you know, great. If it's not obvious, normally they'll just tell you why. But if they have you waiting on the runway, do not wait that long. Basically, what you want to do, you want to get the permission always to take off because something might be going on but and also that's the rules but what the important thing is to note is it is highly possible that um they might forget that you're even out there because they got so many things going on and there is actual cases in the real world where this happens and as someone is touching down the um the, the, that's getting clearance into touchdown they scream uh, they're about to hit a plane that's on a runway and the ATC says oh crap and tells the person to go full throttle to get out of. and fortunately many times when this happens like it doesn't happen all that often but when it does happen it's a lot sometimes people are able to get out of the way quick enough sometimes they're not but um, the general thumb that a lot of people tend to use is if ATC tells you to wait on runway and it's not obvious, ask why. But um, even still, do not wait forever. A lot of people just, will just sit there and wait, wait and wait and wait. Wait only for 30 seconds and say, I'm at runway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, waiting for clearance for takeoff and um, the, that causes them to actually put their line of sight their actual eyes on you to see can you take off is the conditions favorable for you to take off and if not then um, then you know that they'll tell you to wait um, and what this tends to do is this keeps you out of danger as much as possible the point of the actual barriers that, that like where i'm stopped right here it is to keep a person from colliding with another plane because if they're on the ground and they're away from the actual runway itself then the safety skyrockets however when they actually go on the runway or near the runway 
then the safety dramatically drops, especially if they stop or are extremely slow on a runway. So I am at Raleigh Airport, and as far as things goes, um, I, I'm using this as an example because it's bugged out as all out. And what do you do if you run across this? Because you know this video is for simulator versus reality. Is um, you kind of adapt. Now, real quick, if you do run into a thing like this, where the um, gum coming off the runway when you land, you get something like this where dot line and whatnot, and you need contact ground. Don't contact ground on this side. You want to contact ground on the other side. Just stop like where I'm at and just contact ground. Uh, unless there's a solid line on your side, don't you know don't worry just pass it and just stop and contact ground and try to figure out from there reason why is you want to get away from the runway as much as possible in the real life what happens is is ATC airliners and other places they will they most likely won't take the faults of anything uh, uh, nine times out of ten well, I've seen it many 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 times in accident reports like you can just look up things and you'll find that many times they'll blame the pilot versus anyone else in the world. Even when it's clearly ATC's fault, even clear, even when it's clearly the airport's fault, they, they blame anyone else in the world but, um, you know, the, the, those few. Not saying that it's never the pilot's fault, but it's something to know. Now, this is bugged out as all out. Um, let's go, you know, I mean, like you got basic things like lights being screwed up and whatnot. But this, so if you see here, we are at 23L, 5R. 5, the end of 5R is right there. Let's take a look at the diagram for Raleigh Airport. 5R is right here. We are sitting right here. And if you take a look at things, it says go up to five. Okay, I'll just tell you. It, it wants us to go um, take B, cross runway 5R, go back on B, go to E. E is right over here, by the way. Um, took me a while to figure that one out. And then go to F. Yeah, why did we need to cross the, run the runway to do that? And realistically, uh, how would that work? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's bugged out right there. Then it's bugged out by if we take a look at E. Notice that there is no markings. Only figured out was E by going all the way around the airport and looking for a single sign that said E. That might be a nerd one, but... It's definitely on this side. But take a look at this. So just to get to F, we have to go over this thing right here. So then we go to F, and I'll show you the other bronze spot going over there. It um, thinks T is F, and I don't know where it's going to dump us out at. Probably over here, my guess. Um, but honestly, there's no real indication on things. The other indications may be there. So that's a big thing to note. And in fact, I'm curious, actually, where does it actually want us to go? Um, if, if you're having problems trying to figure out that, or just want to see, you can turn on the taxi ribbon. And let's go ahead and save that and go back. So I was correct. It wants me to go over that hump. And that where it wants me to to go is not even general parking. That is some business air cargo thing. I, I mean it's the general parking's all the way over here and here. That's a big thing to note is a lot of this it doesn't really use the 
uh, maps, uh, the diagrams in itself, uh, to generate these um, airports. Some of it does, obviously, because you know you got had some labeling, but a lot of time you'll find stuff goes way off. And sometimes if it has some weird features like this, where you got a bridge where airplanes go across while you got regular cars should go under it. It doesn't recognize that and it can cause problems like that, um, which is a, a common feature in some airports. So that's a big thing to note is you could run some massive problems like that. And let's take a look. It actually wanted me to go out here, go all the way around and go there. It's just better to figure out your own path to get where you need to go and um, and, and just go from there. Uh, so if you're taking off, let's say for example if I was taking off say over there and wanted me to do some weird stuff just to get to this, then just find your own way there and just ignore what ATC and ground service has to say because at the end of the day there is no negative consequence of actually ignoring what they have to say if the thing's bugged out. That's you know just my two cents on it. So, um, and, and by the way, if you do run stuff like this, then report it. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee it's going to get fixed or even looked at, but it's best to report it because maybe it'll get fixed. And um, that, that just upsets everybody. But anything, anyways, if you got any questions, anything else, then feel free to leave that in the comment section. If you feel like I missed anything or left something out, then feel free to leave that down there in the comment section, and I'll try to take a look at that. Um, if you got any um, recommendations on anything like that, uh, anything I should show people, also leave that down in the comment section. Anyways, leave a like, subscribe, share, and check that bell icon so you can get news videos. And I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.